Happy Passover, River Family. Listen, I said I was going to make you a quick video so you can catch the blessing of what it is to observe Passover. Plus, the Bible says we should keep Passover. What? How come nobody taught me that? I don't know, but now you know. Paul in the New Testament writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 through 8, Purge out therefore the old leaven, speaking of sin, that ye may be a new lump, a part of the new thing that God's doing, the loaf, the bread, as ye are unleavened or washed of your sins. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. That means keep Passover. Observe Passover. Talking to everybody, not Jews, just Gentiles, everybody. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. In other words, observe Passover, understanding what it is to be a believer in Christ. And uh, one of the things you're going to see on the on the table in Passover is going to be a Seder plate. Uh, you'll also see like a plate like this. It says matzah in Hebrew. There you go, matzah. And uh, this is our, our matzah plate. And you have different types of plates here in this house. We've got like four different types of Seder plates. That's one of them. And we have this one. And, and then we have another one. And there's six slots in these plates. You'll see six slots. You see six slots. Each slot has an ingredient. And I just want to explain to you what those ingredients are real quick. And you'll have these notes. You'll have the link just like you do. I made your notes so you can go back. Number one, it has bitter herbs. In the Old Testament, the bitter herbs symbolize the harshness of slavery. And in the New Testament, it symbolizes the life that we live in the world. Because nothing in the world is good. It's bitter. Even when you come to Christ, you're going to see it was bitter. Then you have the sweet paste or the they get apples and cinnamon. Sometimes it's in the shape of little squares like when the Jews were made to make bricks. Sometimes it's like paste to represent the mortar. The sweet mixture of the fruit and sometimes they add nuts or wine to it represents the mortar when they were making bricks in Egypt. And the sweetness represents hope because even when you serve God and you go through bitterness, there's always a hope. The Jews were hoping for a Messiah. The New Testament understanding is that we have sweetness when we have Christ. And sometimes we're going to have a little bitterness, but it's worth it because we have hope in Jesus. Another element, so that's two elements. We went over the bitter herbs on the plate. We went over the, the apples and cinnamon or the sweet paste. The third is a vegetable. It could be lettuce, spinach. It could be parsley. And they dip it in salt water because it represents the tears of being in slavery. And in the New Testament, it represents baptism in Christianity. You let you set those tears back that you used to cry in the world, but now you get tears of joy in Jesus. The other ingredient is a shank bone from a lamb. Jesus is a lamb. The lamb had to be roasted. Jesus took the heat, the judgment for us on the cross. And that's what that represents in the Old and the New Testament. They had to do eat a lamb. And in the New Testament, it represents Jesus. Then you have a roasted egg. A roasted egg just represented bringing an animal, you know, the like a baby, like an embryo, to the temple for sacrifice. In the New Testament, we see that it represents new life, resurrection in Jesus. Then another one was another bitter herb that you had on there, which could be a, a romaine lettuce. It's a symbol of the harshness of slavery, kind of like another herb I just talked about. And for us, it symbolizes, it reinforces the bitterness of sin and suffering for Christ. And I always think about it like three Ps because you have three bitter things on there. You have the herbs and um, and one of those is horseradish. I'm sorry. Um, but you have the, the bitterness of being in Egypt, the place in Egypt, the bitterness of being a slave, positioned, the second P, as a slave, and the harshness of production, the, mo the mortar. Have you ever had a job you hated, been in a position you hated, in a place you hated? God sets us free from all those things. Another thing that we have in the plate for the Passover are four cups. And here in this house, we have these two cups we use this year and these two cups. And the four cups represent something. It's in your notes, the four cups. And I, I begin to conclude with this one. The first cup is called the cup of sanctification. And the God says, and it's based out of Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. God says, I'm going to bring you out from the burdens of Egypt. So God begins to sanctify us and he begins to purify us. And uh, for Christians, a cup can signify, the, signify or symbolize the sanctification we go through in Christ. Amen. Then we have the cup of deliverance as the second cup. God says, I will rescue you from their bondage. It's hard enough to have your own bondage. 
to be dealing with somebody else's bondage in your life, you need to, you need God to set you free from that. Sometimes people bring their problems to you and they need to take them to Jesus. Amen. The New Testament understanding is that Jesus Christ is our deliverer. Amen. Stop looking for people to set you free. Only God can set you free in the name of Jesus. Number three is a cup of redemption. God says, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. You're not so far that God can't reach you. His arm can reach you. In the New Testament, it speaks to how Christians, it symbolizes a redemption through the through the cross and the crucifixion of Jesus. And even in the Last Supper, Jesus said in Matthew 26, 28, My blood is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. He delivers us from sin. He redeems us from sin. Uh, and, I, and so the first cup, again, was a cup of sanctification. Second cup was a cup of deliverance. The third cup was a cup of redemption, which talked about how God's going to set us free, uh, deliver us or redeem us with an outstretched arm. The fourth cup is a cup of praise. And God says in verse 7 of Exodus 6, I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Praise the Lord. That's the reason that God accepts you. He doesn't have to. This cup celebrates the relationship between God and the Israelites and now God and his people in the New Testament that God makes us one. So this whole thing about being a separatist in the church and I don't want nobody and this and that. No, no, we're supposed to get together. We're supposed to love getting together even more with our own blood, even more than our own blood and family because the blood of Jesus makes us more family than your natural blood. There is a fifth cup and that cup is kind of set out on an empty chair in Passover. It's called the cup of Elijah. And they believe God for the Messiah to come. But we already know that John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah, preparing the way for Jesus to come. But for us, it reminds us that Jesus came and he's coming again. And so we believe that when we put that cup out as believers, we're not declaring that Jesus is hasn't come. We're saying, Lord, you've come and you're coming again. And Revelation says, come, Lord Jesus, the spirit and the bride say, come, Lord Jesus. In this Passover season, it's a season of miracles. It's a season of receiving it's a season of deliverance. It's a season of redemption. It's a season of God putting his foot on the neck of your enemy. It's also a season of you coming out. Come out of some stuff already. Let go of some leaven, some stuff in your life. Block some stuff. Get right with God. You don't want to be on the wrong side, amen? God is loving, but he's also loving enough to correct us because we're his children. Listen, in this Passover, remember that death passed over uh, the, the homes of God's people and death has passed over us. We're not going to go to hell. We're going to live in heaven with Jesus. But now it's our turn to stay in Christ, to live for Christ, and to allow Christ to live through us. God bless you, River family. Enjoy these notes. Enjoy this video. Share it with somebody. Live for Jesus. Never be embarrassed of Christ because he wasn't embarrassed of you. Happy Passover, River family. God bless you.